Hello. Throughout this presentation, I'm going to introduce you to the wonderful world of linked open data and show you how the ESCO project can be a participant. Defining linked open data isn't that easy, and in a more simplistic view, linked open data can be seen as having the data connected by everyone with no proprietary formats but with structure. Of course, this is still a bit confusing, so let's try to find out through a simple example what it's all about. What is your most frequent activity over the web apart from reading the news? Isn't it search? Do you always find what you seek? You may answer yes, but what about this search? Asking the name of a well-known architect. Even if you Google or Yahoo or Bing it, you will not be able to find the name of the architect. Maybe such a name doesn't exist after all. Well, it exists. And actually, there are two of them, Ictinus and Callicrates. And of course, the question is, why didn't the Wikipedia pages show up, even though they are highly ranked by Google? The answer is basically that the current web is poor on context. All the relations between concepts are defined through HTTP links. This means a computer cannot understand that Ictinus is the architect of, a Parth of the Parthenon. So the question is, how can we build semantic relations so that the computers can understand? Let's look at this representation of knowledge about Ictinus. Relations like architect of, lived in, description are the ones we exactly want to have. The question is, is there a way to achieve such a representation? Indeed there is, it is called RDF, Resource Description Framework. It is a standardized way by the W3C of publishing data on the web in a structured way with meaningful relations between the concepts. And what's the real benefit? If we describe our data with RDF, we can make our previous search accurate. And how is that? Well, there is a language called Sparkle that resembles SQL, through which a computer can provide us with accurate results about our query. So, a first conclusion, the web as we know it today is being replaced with context-rich relations between the concepts we talk about. In this way, computers can now process information, understand the meaning of it. This is the new web, or the semantic web as it is actually called. Let's continue our story, though. So, Ictinus is in Wikipedia related to Parthenon and described in RDF, while Adolf Michaelis, who is also related to Parthenon, is in Europeana. So, now we can link the two tasks together, make them act as one, and query it as a whole. Why were we able to link? Because both datasets are expressed as open data, and because both are described through RDF. So, this is how we can have linked open data. But is it pragmatic? Are there organizations already doing it? Yes, there are. Every single in this diagram represents an organization publishing huge amounts of data in RDF linked together, from Wikipedia to police crime statistics and from BBC News to Eurostat. So the web is transforming to a giant global database. And what about linked open data and ESCO? Well, shall we ask Google about the skills of an architect? Or is it better, you think, to query ESCO itself? Of course, it is better to query ESCO. Why? Because ESCO is described in RDF, this means it is structured. ESCO is going to be expressed as open data very soon, and the question that still remains is to what ESCO can be linked to. Let's see what can happen in the near future. Landscape architecture, being a job-specific skill of an architect, can be linked to Wikipedia and to national classifications like, for example, Rome. So we can soon be talking about an ecosystem of labor market linked open data. Can we really see ESCO fit into the linked open data cloud? The technology is here. We have the technology and the knowledge on how to use it. So let's open our data and just do it. It's only a matter of decision. Thank you. For more information on linked open data technology, do not hesitate to contact us at Tenfos, the pragmatic company in linked open data and semantic web technologies.